Hi, John DeWire here, and this case study is uh, about a uh, company that is involved in carnival amusements. And the name of the company is Carnival Land Amusements, and uh, the owner of this company, a lovely guy by the name of James Kemp, uh, came on board my coaching program, and he said, look, we really just want to beef up sales. Um, and I said, well, who's your target audience? And he said, look, we have all the little mini Ferris wheels and the dodging cars, and we have the jumping castles, and we have the clowns where you put the ping pong ball in the mouth and all that sort of stuff, typical carnival fair sort of equipment and he said uh, our primary target audience is uh, schools okay we are a school fund uh, well, sorry, we, 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 we rent our rides and our attractions to schools for their fates for their annual fates and that's really where the big money is for us he said look we do corporate events like Christmas parties and things for businesses and um, and we do some shopping centers from time to time but where the big money is is with the schools and he said it's pretty competitive because there's a lot of other carnival, you know, sort of hiring companies out there. I said, okay, right, well, show me how you market yourself to the schools. And he gave me a copy of this. Uh, hopefully you can see it there to the camera, okay? And it's a, uh, it's a brochure that they'll send out to the schools. The schools P&C um, committee would decide on which company they would use to, you know, provide the amusements for their school fate. And uh, pretty uninspiring, by the way. <laughs> okay, it's pretty uninspiring. And um, because of my sarcasm, I'm just shaking my head. He goes, you don't like it, do you? I said, no. And then when we open up this booklet, we've got a story there on page two about his family. Okay, he told us all about his family and uh, pretty boring stuff of how the business was, you know, founded in 1872 or whatever it might be. And have a look at this. Right throughout the actual booklet, he actually gives you the details of each of the rides as if we care, you know, the width of the ride, the length of the ride, how many nuts and bolts are in there, and so on and so forth. It was almost like an electrical magazine. And I said to him, OMG, for goodness sake, and by the way, look at the back cover. I mean, the second most valuable page in a booklet like that, and uh, it's empty. So we fixed it for him. I said to him, oh, look, you know, first of all, you've got an identity crisis. You think you're in the amusement hire business when in fact you're Australia's number one fundraising company. And the reason I said that to him is because I said, have you any hard cold statistics on why your amusements are better than others and the schools make more money out of you than using another amusement company? And he said, yeah, yeah, all the time. I said, well, give me some. He said, well, you know, Ipswich Primary School. He said, last year they used, you know, another amusement company. And that amusement company didn't realise that the parents of this particular school were reasonably wealthy and they didn't put the right amusements in. And so, therefore, they didn't make a lot of money. He said, we knew the, the demographics of that school and the parents, so we put the right rides in because we know what rides appeal to what demographic. And we doubled their, their, their fundraising. So it went from, I think I've got it here, it went from, uh, where was it? It was, I think it was $40,000, went to $80,000 that they'd raised. And I'll cut a long story short by saying to you that there was a, two or three other examples that were even more stunning. In some instances, they tripled what the fundraising was from you know, using another amusement company because this guy was the expert. He understood to put the rides in that suited the demographics of that particular school's children and their parents. And I said, okay, well, you don't realise you've got an identity crisis. You're not an amusement company. You're the largest, sorry, you're the best fundraising, school fate fundraising company in the country. And he went, yeah, I am. So what we did is that we changed this, okay, to look like this. And uh, let me just show that one to the camera. Hopefully you're seeing that there. Okay. And you'll see it's a very, very different front cover to this. Let me see if I can get both of them in screen here. You can see the before and after. Okay. Very big difference. And instead of on this one here, if I can just bring it up to the camera again, instead of boring people with a life, you know, story about, you know, when the business was built and whether his great grandfather opened it. On this, we cut straight to the chase. When you open this up, basically on page two, he said, we are school fundraising experts and this is why you should trust us to have your school fate. And on here, basically, he says, this is the way we help you raise more money. And as we go through it, basically, he gives lots of case studies of how they've raised money for people. And then we go through it and give them an easy look. You know, what was it? I think it was... Uh